Hadoop High Availability in a hurry, part two about yarn high availability. And this is a video that grew much larger than I initially intended. Let's have a look. Uh, so what is yarn? Yarn stands for yet another resource negotiator. A lot of products start with yet another nowadays. Anyway, what is a resource negotiator? Well, Let's have a look at some documentation and websites that talk about Yarn. They often call Yarn the data operating system of Hadoop. So what does that mean? It means that applications and jobs run on top of it. Okay, I guess we want to know more about that. So what is a resource negotiator and how will that work? Well. Let's have a look at a Hadoop cluster without a resource negotiator. How would that look if that such a thing existed? So here we have a job from one department and it runs some stuff and it uses CPU and some memory. And here's a job from a second department and they're creating a machine learning model and it just happens to land on the same worker node because we have no resource negotiator of any kind. And it uses quite a bit of CPU and memory. And here's a job from the third department and they're running a job that is rather important and it just happened to land also on worker one and that just happened not to be enough resources for that third job to run so what you basically get is this at one worker node there is a lot of traffic and the other are basically doing nothing so what yarn provides is something called multi-tenancy Hmm, multi-tenancy. I've heard that term before. What it basically means is that you can have multiple groups of uh, Hadoop users that can do different tasks without interfering with each other. So how does Yarn do that? Well, let's have the same cluster, but now with Yarn. So the first department runs a job and it talks to Yarn first. Hey, I want to run this job. And Yarn can, for example, split that workload to multiple workers. Because after all, we're running a distributed system here. Why would you run everything on one node? And here's the second department and they're running their stuff. And it can also be run on multiple nodes. And now we have all the space in the world for that important third job from the marketing department. And it can just run without any problem. And now let's see how Yarn does that. So here we have three worker nodes. And on every node, there is a process called Node Manager. And the Node Managers keep track of what is running on their worker nodes and how many resources are left. And the report is to a centralized resource manager process, which is running on one of the master nodes. Now, the resources on the worker nodes are not just distributed willy-nilly they are distributed in containers the containers are bits of allocated resource that is available to them and before we go further in that let's have a look at a, another process you have to know about and this is called the application master so i'm running a job again and this time the first thing I have to do is create an application master. Now these are specific to the application they're running. There are, for example, Spark application masters, Hive application masters, Pig application masters. And if you're creating a completely different application, you have to create an application master for that as well. And the application master communicates with the resource manager and to say, hey, I want to run something. Now, if the user is allowed to use these resources, the resource manager gives an authorization key and the application master can now communicate with the node managers to tell, hey, I'm going to put a container on your worker node. And it's, the application master will tell because it already has access via the resource manager. So here we can create two containers. Now the application starts to run, and as you can see from this sort of progress bar I created, it starts to use these resources to do its work. And it uses more resources, and at a certain point it might go this far that all resources are used that it has in these containers. So it's going to need a new container. So the application master will connect to the resource manager again to require more space for new containers. And so the resource manager says, okay, you still have 
capacity to do that. I will allow it. And then the application master talks to the node manager again. And here we have a new container. And you can imagine when other jobs run, they create their own application masters and their own containers. And these containers don't need to be of the same size. But you have to know that when you lose a container, you lose all the work. So it's not always better to have large containers. There's one more thing I have to tell about this architecture. And that is that by default, Yarn will limit only memory, not CPU. If you want Yarn to take that in account as well, you have to turn that option on. It's not on by default. All right. Now we're prepared to look at high availability. So what happens if we break certain things in this architecture? So first let's look at a container. If you lose a container, you lose all the work that has been done in that container. So you don't lose data because HDFS is about the data, but if you've done a lot of counting words or aggregations or anything, you have to do that part again that happened in that container. Now, the node manager is the one that monitors the containers and will find out that, hey, there's something wrong with that container. And it will contact the application master and say, hey, something is wrong with your container, man. And the application master, if it, if the container stays down or unapproachable, the application master can create a new container and clean up after the old container. All right. Now, what if there's something wrong with the application master then? Okay, well, the application master sends heartbeats to the resource manager to tell it that it's still alive. And of course, when there is a problem with the application master, the heartbeats stop and the resource manager will find out that there's something wrong with that. And it can decide to create a new app master somewhere else and clean up after the old app master. Now, let's see what happens when a node manager dies. Well, the node manager also sends heartbeats to the resource manager. It's the way that the resource manager knows that the worker is still alive. So no heartbeats, no node manager. And this would be a problem because all that work done by containers on this worker node would then, could then be lost. So in more modern versions of Hadoop, there is something called work preserving recovery for node managers. And this basically means that, that the node managers save their state to a log file. And you can do this to a local file system, but more useful in high availability environments would be to do this on the HDFS because it's a distributed system, it's a cluster. So what will happen when a whole worker fails? Well, here again, we rely on the node manager to send heartbeats to the resource manager. So the resource manager will notice, hey, no heartbeat from the node manager, there's a problem here. Uh, but what will happen with the app master and the containers? Well, of course, here we still have the node manager work preserving locks, but I'm not sure if they help out. I have to try that out on a test system sometime. But if the worker is gone for good, the resource manager will start the app master on a different worker and the app masters will make sure the necessary containers will be created on different nodes and there they have to do their work again. That is, that's at least as far as I can see how this works. What if the resource manager has a problem? Well, on Hadoop versions before version 2, this would have been a big problem because the resource manager was the single point of failure back then. And by the way, in the default configuration still is. In the more recent versions of Hadoop 2, there is also resource manager work preserving recovery. And this makes sure at least that the state of the resource manager is saved to a resource manager lock, which you can save on HDFS. And that way the resource manager can survive to a crash and you can restart it again. But for high availability, we need more than that. We just want to keep the system running whatever happens to the active resource manager. And yes, I said active because we introduce the standby resource manager. The node managers are able to find these resource managers by way of a list, which they go through on a round robin way. And yes, that animation was absolutely necessary. Okay, but now we have a standby and active resource manager, 
Don't we get the same problem that we had with HDFS that the standby name node can't see the active name node for some reason and decides I have to become the active one and then the problem by which they can't see each other is solved and suddenly you have two active name nodes. What was this scenario called again? Oh yeah, this was called a split, a split brain. brain. And the solution is surprisingly similar to the HDFS split brain problem. Again, we're gonna need a zookeeper. And in this case, we're gonna use the zookeeper to save the state of the active resource manager so that in case of a fill over the standby resource manager can read it and take over. And just like with HDFS, you have a process, this time it's called the active standby elector, and the active standby elector on the active resource manager will keep a lock on the so-called Z node, and the standby resource manager therefore can't get it until the active resource manager dies. It's like that scenario I described in the HDFS high availability video, what I now call the repetitively returning sword in the stone scenario, or RRSISS. This is not an official acronym. Well, that's it for now on Yarn High Availability. There's quite a bit more to tell on Hadoop High Availability in practice, but I keep that for another video. This is me, Marcian Krijgsman. If you want to know more, I have a blog called Expedition Data, and you can find it here. I have a Twitter account, and if you need a data engineer, well, that would be great. I'm ready for it. Uh, you can find me at Open Circle Solutions, my employer at opencirclesolutions.nl.